winning the battle. Part of that, it's helpful to know the tactics of the enemy. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. We're going to talk about some of the ordinary, extraordinary works of the demonic the devil. And we'll begin with a little disclaimer. If because we're going to talk a little bit about possession and stuff like that. If you're very sensitive to this stuff, it, uh, for example, it just generally freaks you out, scary movies, etc., keep you up at night, and uh, you have a tendency to sort of over seeing the demonic and things, perhaps, feel free to not, if you know yourself, and this just may not be a good idea, feel free to just not watch the video. There's nothing you will be missing which is going to prevent you from salvation, so... Um, you can be, you can, <laughs> you can, you can go on. So these, these are the, the resources I'm going to pull from personal experience. But secondly, it's going to be, we had a class in seminary with a psychologist who's one of the experts who helps to evaluate those who think they might be possessed to see if it's possession or if it's some sort of, uh, other sort of mental illness, something like that, more natural means. And then I live with one of the friar priests we live with in, in the friary is an exorcist for a diocese. And most of his work he does is deliverance type ministry. Um, which is sort of intimately related, though it's somewhat different than what he does as the exorcist. Here's sort of the typical classifications of the way in which the devil's going to work or the demonic's going to work. Tentatio, infestatio, oppressio, obsessio. Temptation, infestation, oppression, and then um, possession, right? And perhaps maybe there's some other groups where maybe there's some other people who've used slightly different categories, but this is just the ones we're going to use, and I think they're sufficient. Tentatio, right? Temptation. We're familiar with that. We'll come to back to that at the end. Infestation is the sort of demonic activity in a place. Oppression is a little bit outward in. And then possession is where it's a little bit more sort of further along, a little bit more intense, internal, getting into sort of the will and the intellect, things like that. So so what do we, why, why bring it up? What's the point? First of all, we want to root it. We're going to do some couple things. We're going to just sort of acknowledge its existence. We're going to root it and sort of contextualize it talk about how to respond to it and how it affirms Catholicism in particular. And then lastly, we're going to talk about uh, sort of the most aggressive demonic activity that we need to be aware of. So first of all, it's like root it in, let's just root it in, in um, the fullness of the truth of who we are as sons and daughters of God, living temples of the triune God. And I'm going to share the story as I was at, I wasn't living at the friar yet. I was there on a time of retreat where the priest meets with people, prays with people, and, and I'm a couple floors up and I'm just sort of praying, do my thing. And I hear this screaming and, um, I know what happens there. So like, it took me a second. I was like, what's going on? Then I realized what was happening. He, he had a man and a woman meeting with him and he was, he, the, the young woman was showing signs of the demonic. So he's praying with her and we hear the whole, the whole shebang of, of cussing, of vulgarity, of blasphemy, of voice changes. Is there a chance it was something psychological? Sure, I'm not saying 100% this was the demonic, but all the evidence for me, for the sake of what we're doing here, seems like that was what's going on. So he's praying with her for a while. Uh, again, sort of this whole thing's going on, and it's pretty, it's tr pretty dramatic. So what do I do? I get up. I'm a priest already, praying, saying the rosary, throwing some blessings, praying, throwing, saying what, what not, just sort of just entering in, accompanying in it, prayer from outside. That session ends up. The the man and the woman they go home, and um, I sort of get into bed getting ready to go to sleep and the priest comes up and he, he knocks on the door and he's like hey sorry about that uh that doesn't usually happen i didn't know it's gonna be that loud blah 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 this and that i'm like yeah no yeah no worries you know i just um yeah just prayed for a little bit and all right all right good night see ya and we went to bed and here's the thing right like we're not like hardcore we're not any more hardcore than you or i we just know who we are right the mind can't touch us unless we invite it in or unless God allows it. And like, God, God's got us. You know what I mean? Like, like compared to the mind, like, like chill out. Like we got God. And so we're good. And we see stories with this with, um, Padre Pio, St. John Vianney, St. Therese. Like you just know who you are and know who God is and just live in that reality, remain in a state of grace and chill. Like we can do battle, but we do battle with this sort of confidence. Like, like we, we got dad. You know what I mean? And dad's big and actually dad's divine. So we're good. So I just want to contextualize it like that because if you come across it, don't freak out. Don't, oh, certainly we don't want to over try and diagnose it, oversee it. But if you're, if you're in grace, you're a living temple of God, like 
chill. Like we're good. We're good. And again, I don't want to be flippant, but serious. Like we're good. And so this is okay. It's it's important for us to acknowledge this reality, right? So I shared a little bit firsthand account. I've had in other uh, times of manifestation uh, around me. But like, let's let's look back at the whole tradition of the church, going back to scripture and and beyond. Is like throughout the history of Christianity, in particular, there has been very explicit, sometimes sensational, work of Christians against the demonic. This isn't something new. Again, it's scriptural. Jesus is doing it all the time. We see it through the lives of the saints, as I name some, uh, Therese, Padre Pio, St. John Vianney. It's, it's, it's a real thing. And why that's okay and why that's good is it's, an, it's important just to remember, to be honest, like if we allow it to be, it can be good for our faith. Like it's, it's good to remember that uh, the angelic beings are real, demonic beings are real, the spiritual battle is real, the spiritual life is real, invisible realities like we confess at the creed each Sunday, they're real. They're just real and there's lots of evidence for it. And then lastly is this, is the way in which it confirms Catholicism. I'm talking with, with our priest exorcist who sometimes invites brothers in just, just to pray and also to sort of let them experience it firsthand. Is, is one of the things this is like you see how the demons respond to the name of Jesus. You see how they respond to the name of Mary. You see how they respond to the crucifix, to icons of Our Lady, to miraculous medals, to holy water. Even when, right, maybe they're not explicitly known to the person um, with, who has the demon activity within them. Like, it just confirms everything <laughs> about, about Catholicism. Like, if you're in an exorcism and you see the way that which the demon starts to react to the name of, like, Our Lady, all, a lot of these, like, well, isn't she an enemy to God? And they, like, a lot of them get shut down <laughs> pretty quick because they do not like Our Lady at all. And so that's, it's good. It's good for us to remember. Or if you just see the way in which the authority of a priest manifests itself in those, like uh, the work of Christians, particularly through priests um, in deliverance ministry and exorcism ministry, like it just confirms big time the fullness of the truth of the Catholic Church. You're like, yeah, this is, this is all real, no doubt. And lastly, I just want to come with this, right? Is, is we, we talk about it. It's good to name it for some of these reasons, just to be comforted in the strength of our identity to be reminded of the truth as demonic and this the whole spiritual life and its reality it confirms catholicism but like also this this is why we talk about it but we don't emphasize it because i've never met anyone who has suffered the ultimate injury which is the loss of grace right committing moral sin because of an infestation or because of an impression or because of a possession Perhaps those, those, the lack of grace was already there and that opened the door. But I've never seen anybody suffer the ultimate trauma and ultimate violence because of one of those things. But I have seen it in hundreds, if not thousands, I'd say thousands of people because of temptation. And so one of the reasons the devil doesn't like or doesn't refer to all of these other sort of more sensational, uh, extraordinary attacks on us and attacks on the kingdom of God are because his best work is done in the dark and in the secret. And there's these little subtle ways in which he invites us to, to lust. He invites us to gluttony. He invites us to cutting down another. And these little subtle works of his, they get us to just freely straight up, basically kill, kill, <laughs> kill our own souls. You know, and so that's how he wins, uh, is winning most of his battles. So my brothers and sisters, this like, okay, yeah, the demonic's real. And, and it, it confirms the spiritual life, it confirms the authority and the truths taught by the church. The way in which he's coming at you and I the most is going to be through temptation. My brothers and sisters, let's say no to the devil. <laughs> he's a liar, he's an accuser, he hates us, and all he's trying to do is to bring us to hell. And he's trying to do it in little subtle ways. And so let's be renewed in asking God's grace to deliver us from temptation. And let's be renewed in saying no to the devil. And let's be renewed on calling on Our Lady and Her Grace to help us in battle. And in St. Michael the Archangel, right? Like, let's just say no to gossip. Let's say no to lust. Let's say no to pornography. Let's say no to, um, to getting wasted. Let's say no to cutting down a brother and sister. Let's say no to all of this. And let's say no to temptation. Yes to the good Lord Jesus. Let's grow in grace. Let's build up the kingdom. Let's send the devil and all of his little demon friends back to hell. And let's build up the kingdom of God. And let's win this battle. All right? So let's pray well. Let's pray well. Let's live well. Let's do battle well, particularly by calling down God's grace, by living from our identity as, as heirs, heirs of the kingdom.
and let's live in peace. Let's live in peace. Thank you for watching. Somos peregrinos. We're pilgrims on this earth. Poco a poco, little by little. Vamos a llegar. We're going to make it. God bless you.